All right, we are back on the record. Appearances are as they were before. I need to make a record that at 8.42 a.m., this court ordered Mr. Brooks be removed from the courtroom due to repeated uh, interruptions and disruption uh, with the court. Uh, this, of course, comes on the recent history with Mr. Brooks on every day that we have been in court since Monday um, he has shown a complete and utter disrespect for the simple rules of civility. Um, he has been removed from the courtroom multiple times. This morning alone, he started interrupting this court within a minute of the court calling the case. Um, I should also make a record at, at the moment he is muted uh, because of the way that he was removed from the courtroom and his conduct since. Um, I have been given just a bit of information about it. I will advise everyone that I have required that the Sheriff's Department uh, file a written report with the court uh, regarding Mr. Brooks's conduct. I'm told that um, he would not sit down while in this courtroom in order to have the shackles removed so that he could be taken to the other courtroom that he was resisting. Um, that at one point he took off a shoe and it appeared uh, to the deputies that he was going to throw the shoe. Um, you can see that he is seated with his back uh, to the court or to the camera. He took his shirt off as well. I'm also told that he is threatening to throw and break items. I want to give him headphones since he has uh, claimed in the past to be hard of hearing in one ear, but given his statement that he would throw and break things um, unless he can pledge to this court uh, that he will not do that, um, I'm not going to provide that information. I will advise that the audio in that courtroom should be turned up accordingly so that uh, it is louder than it has been. I've also been advised that uh, the audio and visual equipment is working in that courtroom. The deputies that are in there can see and hear uh, the court through the polycom system. Uh, today is a little bit different in that there is no Zoom. And so, um, but this court with the uh, blessing of technology in this new building have the ability to call in one room system to the other. That is why we're able to see and when appropriately hear him when unmuted and then there are the four camera angles that are presently from this courtroom i have the camera in the other courtroom um, on a single camera since he's the only individual in there um, this court has in essence extended this courtroom to the neighboring courtroom while there is ample evidence in the record not only through the proceedings up to this point but this morning alone uh, that through his conduct, he has forfeited his right to be present. I'd also make a finding that he uh, is appearing from that courtroom and that because of the audio and visual equipment and system that we have in place, that it is the functional equivalent of being present in this courtroom. Um, this court has relied repeatedly on Illinois versus Allen. I've read portions of that case into the record. I don't intend to go through that at length here today, other than to indicate that um, trial judges that are confronted with disruptive, contemptuous, stubbornly defiant defendants must be given sufficient discretion to meet the circumstances of each case. No one formula exists for maintaining the appropriate courtroom atmosphere will be best in all ones or in all situations. And in that case, um, there were at least three constitutionally permissible ways for a trial judge to handle uh, a stubbornly defiant defendant, which this court would find Mr. Brooks squarely has become and has demonstrated over the course of these last few days. Um, one option is to bind and gag him. I've already talked about at a previous hearing why I choose not to do that. Um, cite him for contempt. I choose not to do that either. The third is to take him out of the courtroom until he promises to conduct himself properly. Uh, Mr. Brooks today, of course, showed up in court from the jail in his jail attire. 
Um, he does that by his choice. Um, I gave him the opportunity to go back to the jail to put on his suit and tie or other street clothes. He refused to answer that question. Um, this court will continue with this trial as I have previously indicated. Um, there are many resources uh, that have been put into bringing this day to bear and um, it is important for all involved um, that this trial continue. Again, Mr. Brooks is given the opportunity to appear from that other courtroom. At this point, I'm still in the final housekeeping matters, and so he clearly has forfeited his right to be present for that. Um, I will advise Mr. Brooks, as I have advised him repeatedly, if at any point in time he wants to come back, and he is willing to promise that he will abide by uh, the rules of courtesy and decorum and be civil um, and show